The Unshackled Waves, episode 129. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. Facebook is easily the biggest social media platform in the world. It's used for sharing our daily thoughts, promoting businesses, and of course, political discussions. Over the past few years, Facebook has sought to actively censor some political views, normally conservative ones, which they claim are hate speech, or as it puts it, violating their community standards. Many on the right have been subjected to repeated 30-day bans from Facebook, and also had their Facebook pages unpublished. The United Patriots Front, whose main page had over 120,000 likes was deleted last year and its leader Blair Cottrell was permanently banned from Facebook. The Make New Zealand Great Again political party also had its Facebook page deleted for a meme which mocked Jacinta Ardern's uh, twin support for abortion and ending child poverty. The latest casualty of this social media censorship is uh, the Advanced Australia Wear Facebook page, which was unpublished last week with no warning given. Uh, its founder is Steve Templer, who is also currently serving a 30-day ban from Facebook. We had him on the show at the beginning of 2017 to discuss his page, so I thought given in the wake of Facebook's decision, it would be good to have him back on to discuss his recent experience and what his future plans are. <laughs> Steve, welcome back to the show. Thanks, mate. It's uh, great to be here. Wish it could be under slightly different circumstances, but uh, here we are. We do with the hands that we're dealt, and uh, it's great to be back on with you guys. I've been listening to you guys uh, rather consistently for the last year or so, and everything's going really well for you guys. It's, it's, it's a good chat. Yeah, oh, that's uh, good to hear. And yes, it would be uh, better if it was under uh, improved circumstances. I can't imagine how you're feeling given that, you know, two and a half years work is gone just like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is definitely uh, disappointing. Uh, but then again, when we say, you know, under different circumstances, the, the whole reason why people like you and I are doing what we're doing is because we're not happy with the circumstances we see in uh, our country and in our culture and, and in and in the Western world. You know, if we were if we were all happy with everything that was going on, well, we probably wouldn't be here chatting about it. We'd just be enjoying a, enjoying uh, life as it is. But it's because we uh, see things actually going wrong that the uh, the, the mainstream in the community, uh, to a certain extent, uh, is either ignoring or is not having their attention. Uh, of what's going on brought to them, you know, that's the reason why we're here. Uh, now let's uh, talk about what turned you into uh, a Facebook uh, criminal, if I will use that term. So uh, what did uh, the Advanced Australia Wear page uh, do? Obviously we had you on the show previously uh, to talk about it, but just, uh, uh, that was obviously a year ago, just, you know, refresh what mm -hmm. the page was about. Yeah, uh... Well, I started the page Advanced Australia where as a result of uh, the Turnbull Abbott uh, disaster uh, in 2015. Now, that was uh, one of the uh, things that I thought was, it was absolutely criminal in uh, Australian politics for something like that to go on. And I was also, uh, I was also quite actively engaged in the debate in regards it, to libertarianism, conservatism uh, versus uh, the SJW culture and political correctness and and things like that so that was the basis of me starting up that was it was really one of the last straws when we we saw we had a uh a, a not not a perfect prime minister by any means but a good prime minister uh with quite good conservative values uh knifed in the back by the left wing of the liberal party and uh it was just the last straw for me i i had to uh take a much stronger stance and be much more active. Now, when we had you on the show previously, uh, Advanced Australia Wear was only at uh, 4,000 Facebooks 
likes and in a year you managed to grow up to at the time of its uh unpublication you're at uh 28,000 likes so how did you achieve such a uh, astronomical uh, growth yeah it was a uh, i mean it was very good growth it was a combination of things um uh, it wasn't just a mere uh reposting of everything else that you saw on the on the net that you could that you could get from other uh, patriot style conservative pages. Uh, I mean, you know, we all shared a lot of memes and a lot, and a lot of the current affairs for the day. Uh, but we also uh, took on a little bit of a slightly different bent is that in that not only were we just trying to highlight uh, issues to the public, we were also trying to educate uh, people as to how to take these on. These are the messages we need to get across. This is how how you need to combat this particular argument or whatever it may be. Um, and taking a, a much more educational stance. We also did uh, a lot of our own uh, uh, memes, which you know, and when you come up, when you're coming up with original stuff, uh, that it, it it gets to be quite popular. We had a number of um, meme. What I used to do, I, I used to put it in a uh, uh, sponsor some of the memes that would go up, and uh, I'd put a, you know, when, when I'm saying sponsor, I'm talking you know five or ten dollars, but I mean it adds up when you do that once or twice a week, and and that can really boost your popularity up. So when I found that we had come up with, particularly with an original uh, meme that was gaining traction, I'd put you know five or ten dollars behind it, and that would. Uh, expand it to a gr far greater audience, and uh, we would often get memes that would, you know, get five or six thousand, ten thousand likes. You know, uh, I'd made my own videos talking about firearms, talking about same-sex marriage, talking about all these different things, and I really felt that um, uh, I was adding uh, not just uh, a um, a negative spin on on these things but really educating people as to why certain things were dangerous you know it's not just enough to get out there and say uh you know it's okay to say no you know i i felt it was we we needed to get out there and say what are the actual reasons that you needed to say no you know and those sorts of things you know gain traction yeah, you know, and we also had quite a few uh, editors uh, who, who I brought on board, and they were very active. Yeah, you know, and so we really engaged with our audience. We didn't just put something out there and just uh, l just left it to see how it goes. Uh, we would always try and engage with as many of the people who were following the the page as possible. We'd always try to answer their uh their emails and things like that and and really get them on board i think that's the most uh, scummy aspect of, of what facebook did is that they're willing to you know accept your money to uh, grow your page but once you know they they it's you know gaining tens of thousands of followers facebook pulls it and say oh well, we enjoy taking your money but you know we're basically going to destroy what you created yeah and funny thing you know i actually boosted a couple of uh uh, posts just before it was pulled. Okay, now so uh, ultimately, see what what I would do. I would put on say twenty or thirty dollars onto a post, and if it gained traction, I'd I'd let it go. If it didn't really gain traction, and I'd only spent like four or five dollars or whatever, I'd pull it. So I put a couple of uh, uh, posts up there and uh, promoted them. The next day. They unpublish it, but only yesterday I get the email. Oh, your uh, your your uh, sponsored posters has finished now. Thank you very much, and we've taken the thirty dollars or the forty dollars or whatever it was. Yeah, so I paid them. You know, this month probably about eighty to ninety dollars uh, for po for sponsoring posts on a page that they had unpub unpublished a number of weeks ago. So obviously I got no benefit from it. It's like uh, paying for prepaid phone credit, and then the the phone company saying, "Oh, you know, we're uh, we're going to cut your service." Yeah, oh, ab absolutely, absolutely. And uh, funny to that point, which we may cover later on, but uh, the analogy between the the phone service and, and Facebook, when you, Facebook 
uh, has over d 2 billion subscribers and it is the default way that people communicate nowadays. I mean, I very rarely communicate with anyone with my phone. I'm always doing it with, uh, with Facebook. You know, that would be the, the default way I would connect with friends. You know, it really has become a utility. You know, and uh, to all of a sudden have that utility being um, censored or taken away from you based on your political ideology is really despicable as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, you know, people, uh, when they see what has happened to uh, Advanced Australia Wear and what has happened to a number of other, other pages and, and people who uh, cross Facebook's arbitrary line of uh, political correctness, and if you are not in agreement with their position, that you are going to lose uh, such a ubiquitous utility, such as the ability to contact all your friends, because all your friends are on there and all your family is on there. It's my primary way of contacting my family uh, and, and friends. And, uh, you know, now I'm on a, another 30-day ban, so I'm having to get other friends to contact people for me. You know, uh, I mean, it is it is just despicable that that, that can happen. So uh, it's a warning to everyone else. So I think... Uh, uh, you know, when you want to get active on Facebook, uh, we really have to have alternative accounts, unfortunately. I didn't like doing that because I, I was proud of the fact that I was standing up for my beliefs under my own name. You know, this was me. I was not trying to hide from anyone. Uh, this is me. This is my opinion. If you have problems with it, let's have a chat about it. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, they want they don't uh, want me to allow me to have a chat to anyone about it. They just want to cut me off. And so that can happen to anyone. So uh, it really comes to a stage where we really have to have uh, alternative accounts under different names. Yeah. And that is not what should be happening in a free society whatsoever. That is just wrong. Uh, when did, uh, obviously, uh, Facebook uh, remove uh, a lot of posts and then it didn't just ban you, it banned uh, other admins from a, a advanced stray wear on a repeated basis. When was the beginning of uh, this Facebook censorship and when did it start to really you know, hinder uh, your ability to run the page? Yeah, um, it... Over the time, I've had a couple of bans. You know, the the usual way that Facebook bans, they give you a 24-hour ban, then a three-day ban, then a seven-day ban, then a 30-day ban. Uh, it was around about the time that I got a 30-day ban uh, over December, January, where I was uh, I was banned because I had made a specific post about the fact that. Uh, uh, regarding yourself as anything other than male or female under the DSM-5 was actually classed as a mental illness, which of course it is. And under the DSM-5, which is used in the United States and in Australia for mental health, uh, gender dysphoria is classed as a mental illness. And I had stated this as fact. Uh, they were not happy with this and uh, I was banned for 30 days. Then when I got back on, I found it, uh, it was quite strange that because uh, being the admin of a page, you can, you can see how many people have had a look at any particular post. And normally for an average post, we, you know, for actually for a, a minor post, we would get say 500 to 1,000 people seeing it. For a, for a really good post, we would get uh, 50 to 100,000 people seeing it. And I noticed that every second post had no people seeing it whatsoever. And only every second post had any people seeing it all. And even then it was in the hundreds. Uh, and uh, then uh, I got noticed that, uh, it, that it had become unpublished. And then everyone started to get bans left, right and centre. I was given a, a, another 30-day ban, which I'm... Uh, well, actually, I wasn't given a, a ban for that. I was given a ban later on uh, when I tried to start up Advanced Australia Wear again under, uh, on, a, on a different page. 
uh, and I made the mistake of uh, mentioning gender dysphoria again. Uh, I should have known that they were that they must be major trigger words for Facebook. And then as soon as I did that, I got another 30-day ban. And then I tried to uh, appeal the Advanced Australia Wears being unpublished. And as soon as I tried to appeal it, all of a sudden, all the editors, all at once, got bans. Uh, so, you know, I was already already on a 30-day ban. They could have increased my ban. They haven't told me. But everyone got a ban uh, as a result of me appealing the original unpublishing of Advanced Australia Wear. It's a little bit conf confusing, a little bit con convoluted. Uh, but basically, they uh, Facebook had decided that I was... Uh, uh, not the person that they sort of wanted to have on Facebook at all and just started banning everything left, right and centre and started following following my posting habits onto other pages. And because uh, I was one of the, the editors of the page and, yeah, because, you know, you dared to appeal the decision, we, yeah, uh, everyone, including me, copped a, uh, a ban or a warning. I was banned for uh, 24 hours as a... Uh, sort of collective uh, punishment for, you know, daring to be associated uh, with, uh, with this page. And, of course, I wasn't, you know, told, you know, what I had, you know, posted that was uh, so, so offensive. Oh, yeah, it, it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, and uh, one of the editors uh, actually uh, sent me a message and he showed me uh, his banning notice and it says, uh, it appears that you have uh, posted something that goes against our... Uh, our, our Facebook terms of service and, and guidelines, and it was a photo of me. And I'm thinking, am, am I that offensive? I mean, that was the only reason that, that, that they had given was a photo of me. And, uh, of course, they're not really pointing to anything in particular. It was obvious. They just wanted to get rid of me and get rid of the page altogether. You know, so, yeah, wh where, do you, where do you go from, from there? You know, Facebook is really becoming... Uh, is, uh, a, a quasi um, KGB, you know, uh, out looking out for anyone who doesn't agree with the uh, current political zeitgeist, and uh, is is getting rid of them. Uh, it makes our uh, governments look like they're the the great uh, defenders of free speech because you know Facebook. Uh, you know, takes, you know, hate speech laws and, pl and applies them to the extreme. The fact that, you know, you can't question, you know, se uh, 76 genders or you can't, you know, point out the, you know, hypocrisy of uh, anti-white racism. The fact that, you know, Facebook, you know, considers that all hate speech and that if anyone's, uh, you know, feelings are hurt by a post, then uh, that's uh, justification to ban them. Yeah, contradiction is not hate speech you know bringing out and pointing out someone might might have a hypocritical position and pointing out their hypocrisy is not hate speech in actual fact i think it's the the one of the most valued things that we can do for society is, is to tell the truth we must keep on telling the truth uh because the 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 truth cannot be uh just uh put away with an with an insult you know, so they have to have some sort of, way, uh, of um, uh, reason that they can justify it and they put everything into the realm of hate speech. You know, we're, we're, as I was saying, all I'm trying to do is put up an alternative viewpoint, uh, look at the science behind things, uh, look at their reasoning for things and point out that they might be supporting... Uh, the LGBT community on one hand, and on the other hand, they're uh, also supporting the Islamic community. You know, this this sort of hypocrisy, this sort of uh, contradiction in in the politically correct position needs explaining. And if it can't be explained properly, then it should be dismissed. And this is uh, again, I was doing a lot of live streams prior to uh, the. Um, uh, the banning of the page, and this is one of the, one of the things I was I was pointing out. If there's a logical contradiction in what someone is actually saying, then everything they're saying is put under a cloud, and everything can be dismissed until they explain 
and to get rid of that contradiction. If they can't get rid of that contradiction in their position, then we should be we should arbitrarily dismiss everything they're saying, you know, because it's obvious that they have an alternative uh, reason that they're not saying. There, there is some alternative uh, reason for for them coming out with this stuff that they're hiding, you know, and that is what needs to be exposed, you know. So the you know, people, uh, organisations like the Greens, they are not supporting the LGBT community. They are not supporting the Muslim community. They are using the LGBT community. They are using the Muslim community in order to further some other uh, agenda that they are not saying, okay? Because you cannot support one and the other at the same time. It's a logical contradiction. Yeah, so you have to have a different agenda. What is that agenda? Come out and tell us what that agenda is. And you know, pretty much it's not hard to read through the lines there. Their agenda is power. It is a power play. They hate the West. They hate uh, Christian culture. They uh, want to bring in an alternative uh or um, way of running our culture that that is not based on science. It's not based on reason. It's not based on tolerance. You know, it's a completely different thing. You know, and we've seen it happen throughout the uh, 20th century. Their I the ideologies that these people have on the left led to the deaths of millions of people through fascism and through communism throughout the 20th century. Now, they're not the Stasi, they're not the KGB, they're not the brown shirts, but they do have the same ideologies. And that, if we just let that go, we don't know where it's going to go further down the track. We just don't know. And I don't trust them as far as I can throw them, quite frankly. And the page took quite a prominent role in the, the No campaign in the uh, marriage law postal survey. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, that, that makes you, you know, quite unpopular. And the page uh, attracted a lot of, you know, trolls which uh, contributed to uh, you know, the reporting to Facebook and Facebook deciding that they uh, wanted to uh, target you. Uh, do you agree that that also played a part? Oh, ab absolutely, absolutely. Uh, when I started up Advanced Australia Aware, I was really hoping to bring forward different points of view, but also to engage with people from all sides of the spectrum. I said that on my videos. I said, look, you know, you may agree or disagree. Let's have a chat about it in the comments uh, after this video. Let's talk about it. But then we started to get uh, so many trolls reporting us that uh, that often that eventually I had to start banning people. I, I really did not want to ban people from the page at all. It was really, that was an anathema to me. But they were putting the page in such jeopardy and putting our editors in such jeopardy uh, for getting them bans all the time that I had to start banning people. As soon as I got a whiff that they were an SJW, uh, I really uh, got straight onto their profile and banned them straight away and blocked them. Now, this is the result of Facebook's terms and policies. If you don't allow dissent and, and we try and have a conversation, but you just want to uh, ban us every time we do that, we're forced with our backs to the wall. We have to start banning people. Now, that creates a polarised effect. All of a sudden, we only have people on our page who agree with us. Uh, we're only talking to our own and the people on the left are only talking to their own and this is where Facebook was actually fostering this polarization it was not a, a good way of going about it at all it was making things worse Facebook has many fantastic abilities uh, fantastic uh, attributes and it's it's really good but if it continues along this side, uh, side of things, it will be another force, an, uh, another magnet to the polarisation 
of the political views in our community because it will it will actually worsen the amount of dialogue that we will be able to have with each other and it's no good that is, that that is a bad omen for for our for our culture and a bad omen, omen for our culture uh, for two billion people, the majority of which are in the Western world, of course, uh, it is uh, fostering the, the polarisation and it is not good. Now, some of the posts, in my opinion, did go too far. Having said that, you know, I don't think that you know Facebook should have uh, removed them. But were there times where you and the the other editors reflected and say, well, maybe you know we shouldn't have gone that far with a post? Yeah, there were a couple uh, that were put on there by, by some of the editors that I had uh, a bit of pause to, to, to think, you know, that's really, you know, uh, uh, getting a little bit too edgy there. We're really pushing the envelope. It's not that I necessarily disagreed with their sentiment, but sometimes I thought some of the posts, uh, if someone was actually looking to misinterpret something, they would easily be able to misinterpret, you know, X, Y, Z post. Uh, and there were a couple there that I actually pulled myself. Not that I necessarily disagreed with them, but I saw how they could easily be taken the wrong way. Again, some of the posts that were put up, um, when I looked at them, I had a bit of a concern about them. But in looking at them, it wasn't our post that was uh, the the issue. We had picked the the the, the pictures or the or the short uh, film clip, whatever it was, up from there, and we were highlighting the issues. Like for instance, uh, I got a, a seven day ban for uh, putting up a a, a a meme about Gary Dowsett. Gary Dowsett is one of these guys who was uh, formulating or, or heavily involved in some way in the Safe Schools uh, prog project. Now, he had a quote of him in regards to pedophiles, and uh, it was... I, I personally found it very disturbing, and I put up this post of Gary Dowsett with this particular quote that uh, was attributed to him. Now, I was given a seven-day ban for that, and it was a pretty out-there sort of a post. But it wasn't my quote. It was his words that, that were on there. Now, that was uh, quite disturbing that I was getting a ban for showing someone else's words. You know, that it was a direct quote. You know, and that's quite disturbing. And some of the others, like, you know, uh, one of the ones I also got a ban for was this uh, video of a uh, transvestite with very bad makeup, uh, who needed a shave, you know, and it, it was it was just atrocious. And and I put this up and, and uh, highlighted, it. and of course this got flagged. But it wasn't us making them out to be anything other than what they were. I was showing them for what they actually were, yeah. You know, and that was, uh, yeah. You know, it was quite disturbing that by showing people for what they were, without comment, that I was getting flagged for that. You know, so some of them, some of them were out there. But but again, if you want to foster debate, you don't just go banning people so that they feel as though they've got to start censoring their own uh, followers and and getting rid of followers and not bringing people into the into the conversation. You know, if it's a particularly offensive uh, post to you, get rid of that post. But let the conversation continue. You know, uh, uh, monitor the the debate, but don't stop the debate. You know, when you try and stop it like what they're doing, that is when you polarise. You know, large sections of the community. You know, and we're seeing the rise uh, of. Uh, certain elements on the extreme right that concern me to a certain extent. You know, I don't necessarily like seeing uh, the extreme right come out because it can bring out some crazies. And, uh, you know, when you uh, foster the extreme left, 
you're going to get an opposite reaction, and it's it's going to happen. And the end result of that, as we've seen uh, throughout history, time and time again, it doesn't end well. Now, the page uh, was unpublished. You weren't given any warning. It just happened uh, just like that. And uh, as I mentioned previously, you you know, spent two and a half years building it up. You uh, were posting, you know, multiple uh, times a day. You basically had, you know, a large part of your life, you know, taken away from you um, just like that. And uh, so how did you, you know, react? How did you feel, you know, when, you know, that, uh, that happened and you're sort of like, well, you know, I haven't got a, you know, platform anymore. Like, you know, what, to, what can yeah. I do? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it certainly gave me a lot more free time. Uh, but uh, I was I was shocked at first uh, and uh, a bit confused as to what was this going to mean for the future. Uh, now um, I was a yeah I, I was a little bit depressed uh, at at the start you know and, and disappointed. However, uh, my wife said I I was I was in a depression for for the for the whole week, but in reality uh, I wasn't depressed in reality, about uh, losing Advance Australia Wear and all the effort. You know, it, it, w- it was on borrowed time because we were having such a good effect and our popularity had exploded. Uh, so I sort of knew that I was going to be on borrowed time. What affected me more, really, was the knowledge that um, it's uh, in the 20th century, it was governments uh, with particular ideologies censoring the population. Now we have private companies censoring great sections of the population and telling great sections of the population that their views are not welcome. Uh, and these private companies have great influence. Now, that was uh, something that actually quite got me down over the week, thinking that how do we do this? How, how do we operate our society when uh, private companies who are op- operating what have become utilities for us, uh, as basic to us as internet connections, as basic to us as uh, electricity, that is what Facebook is becoming. It is becoming, uh, we are de- coming to depend on it to operate our normal daily lives. Now, when a private company is ideologically driven uh, and can start doing this, I found that really disturbing. Yeah, and that, that it is still the most disturbing thing to me because I don't get a vote in what Facebook does. You know, uh, the, the majority shareholders of Facebook, they're the ones that get a vote. Um, uh, we also have... Um, Sorry, I just got a message. Then I'm still on the line with there with you. Yep. Yep. Good. Good. Um, I don't get a. I don't get a vote. We don't get a vote. We can't kick them out in four years and install someone who's uh, uh, more moderate. We also have Facebook, where its uh, it, its main moderating company is Media Matters. Media Matters is owned by George Soros and it holds the contract, I believe, with Facebook to do all the, all the censoring of all the complaints that come through. Facebook doesn't look after that per se itself. It, is, it is farm, has farmed that out to Media Matters, owned by uh, one of Western culture's greatest enemies in George Soros. You know, now, it is really disturbing to see how our communities uh, are basically uh, instituting these sorts of uh, problems on itself. Normally it was governments. Now it's we're, we're allowing companies to do it to us. And of course, the the argument that's uh, put forward by um, a lot of people, including some libertarians, is that you know Facebook is a, a private company; it can uh, deny service to you know anyone at once, which you know legally it you know it can uh, do that. But it's you know not healthy uh, you know for uh, a free society. And you know Facebook you know it invites people to you know share. Uh, 
people to share their thoughts, you know, to uh, discuss things and yeah, oh, but you know, when, you know, we, you say something, you know, we don't like it, you know, Facebook, they should really, you know, be honest with the consumer that, you know, you're basically not allowed to be, you know, a conservative or, you know, a patriot uh, on our platform, uh, go, go somewhere else and, uh, you know, or, and we won't, you know, accept your money. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, they'll certainly take our money, but uh, they're, they're happy to do to do that. Uh, but um, yeah, I I quite agree. And, and as I think I said before, Facebook now is really a utility. Um, with uh, with my telephone service, if I don't like my telephone service, I can leave Telstra, go to Optus, or uh, cancel my Vodafone subscription and go to. Uh, go to Telstra. I, I have alternatives. With two billion people on Facebook, uh, where people are running their businesses now on Facebook, where all of my friends, all of my family are on Facebook, uh, what alternatives do we really have? You know, this, uh, yeah, although, yes, it is a privately owned company and the libertarian side of me uh, understands that argument all too well, but at the same time, uh, I believe in a, a, an individual's ability to, to choose, and we should have the ability to choose between products. We only have one product at the moment. There are other alternatives. There's uh, Mines, there's uh, Gab, there's another one called Social Cross that I've heard of it, uh, but uh, the most popular of these their uh, numbers uh, are in the uh, you know the low low millions, and it, they're not nearly as ubiquitous as uh, Facebook. Uh, so we're we're in a, a real dilemma there. You know, so uh, it's in uh, even with a pure libertarian sort of view, there always will come in certain circumstances a dilemma. Okay, and this is the dilemma we are in. Do we uh, allow Facebook to operate as its own company and make its own decisions, or do we realise that it is that its decisions can negatively affect millions of people in quite capricious ways, and do we look at it as something different other than just a private company? Does it have other responsibilities to the community? Okay, I might have the only well uh, in my community. Uh, that uh, that doesn't mean if if there's no one else in my community who could possibly get water, uh, I have an obligation to my community. I believe to to not exploit the community and not use that uh, that power to divide the community and uh, it. Um, use it as a as an act of power on other people who don't have a choice you know th that is where uh although the the libertarian idea of free markets comes in we do ha uh, must look at individuals and their moral obligations to their fellow man uh, you and me, we've been forced to communicate the old-fashioned way, which is uh, phone and uh, email. Luckily, uh, they have uh, those uh, companies haven't gone, you know, full uh, social justice warriors. Uh, we at the Unshackled, we're uh, insuring ourselves against a potential uh, Facebook uh, uh, censorship. I mean, uh, lucky we're a website, not a Facebook page, so uh, you know we still have our, you know web uh, hosting that all our contents there and we've also got a you know, minds and gab.ai account which we keep active it's i, I think the because uh, like you said they're they're not very active these new sites even though they you know obviously have a you know commitment to free speech and you can say you know whatever like even you know alt-right people uh, are allowed a, a, a platform uh, on these sites. It, it seems like we're all going to have to, you know, migrate all at once. I mean, we have, you know, people like us, we often talk about, you know, we need to uh, shift. We've, we've sort of got to, you know, go all en masse, which is sort of, you know, getting people to collectively do something. <laughs> you and I both know it's quite difficult. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, getting people to shift over is, is certainly 
going to be an issue. So, um, you know, and with people who access uh, the, the Unshackled through Facebook, I mean, if they haven't signed up uh, to the website, to, you know, or they or they don't have any other way of accessing uh, the Unshackled website, that they, they should do so before, uh, you know, hopefully never happens. But uh, you know, if if something, God forbid, would happen to the Unshackled or some of these others, that yeah, you know, they do really do uh, need alternatives. Um, I, I hope that um, somehow people will cotton on maybe through Facebook, through the sharing of web pages or uh, uh, posts from Minds uh, or Gab that, they'll, that they will become aware that these other alternatives are out. At this stage, uh, for myself, I, I'm not on Minds or, or, or Gab as yet, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm certainly, uh, yeah, it's inevitable that I'm going to have to get onto those and start putting an effort in there as well. Oh, we have mainly talked about Facebook today, but uh, other major social media sites have also engaged in censorship. Obviously, uh, Twitter has you know, banned uh, a lot of yeah. uh, conservatives, most prominent. YouTube. Uh, yeah, yeah. YouTube has uh, deleted uh, many channels. If it, if it hasn't deleted, it gives you uh, what it terms community standards uh, strikes, which you know, bans you from live streaming and uh, other things. So, uh, Gab.ai, that's, uh, we should specify, that's the uh, free speech version of Twitter. Twitter. And there's been a few attempts to create a, a free speech uh, version of uh, YouTube. Uh, the, the one that we use is called uh, PewTube. Uh, I love its uh, tagline, which is, uh, it's not owned by Gulag. Right, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, a lot of the, the uh, problems, of course, with this are just market, plain old uh, marketing or economics 101 you know the first to the market is the one that's going to grab the majority share so uh, and, and this is the thing that does concern me is that uh, YouTube has the majority share of that type of market Facebook has the majority share of that type of market because they were really the first in now the second in is you know might get 20% of the market the third or fourth in they're going to be relegated to uh, very minor shares and it's very hard to flip those around I'm not prepared to, to just get rid of uh, Facebook or give up on Facebook yet uh, it's it's likely it's going to be the majority uh, that pe uh, majority way that people access their social media for a very long time to come, and uh, you know it's going to take a lot of work. But we have to come up with alternative ways to make sure that we're still on Facebook at the same time that we try and promote these others. You know, it's uh, it's too big an audience for us to just uh, let go. If we just if we all migrated to Minds or we all uh, like you know all of us in the um, in, in the conservative community, we'd be leaving a great section of the community uh, behind that that are just going to stay with Facebook because it's the easiest and it's the the one that they know. You know, so uh, I'm all for promoting these other ones, and we should as as much as we possibly can. But at the same time, we have to find some way uh, to to get workarounds to work within uh, YouTube and work within Facebook and those platforms. Now, obviously, you're not going to be uh, silenced, but uh, Facebook's uh, done its best to uh, try, try and have that effect on you. So uh, what are your plans uh, going forward? Obviously, you tried to set up the second Advanced Australia web page. That got taken down as well. Uh, so how do you plan to uh, get your message out there? Yeah, well, um, I've started up a web page. Now, that, that is just a blog. Now people can uh, will be able when I start up again on on Facebook, um, uh, I'll come up with some other name, some other account. Uh, I'll I'll start promoting that again, but uh, I'll be promoting Advance Australia where uh, through the web page. Uh, at the moment, it's just under stephentempler.net, uh, and that blog can be accessed that way 
Uh, I've only, it's only a very recent thing. I've only got uh, one or two posts up there at the moment. But it's from there that I will ex, uh, expand. I'm going to use that as a basis for posting and then share uh, posts from that page onto Facebook. Uh, I think it's much easier for Facebook to censor you uh, when we did as we, what we were doing uh, with Advanced Australia where we were uh, sharing things directly with with Facebook. I'll be sharing them on ad advancedaustraliaware.net uh, and uh, uh, stephentemplar.net uh, and I'll be sharing it on there and then I'll be sharing those posts to Facebook. So, you know, just a couple of these workarounds uh, make it a little bit harder uh, for Facebook to uh, claim that you're uh, going against community standards, you know, because it's not a post directly on Facebook. Oh, well, it's, well, we'll see how uh, Facebook reacts. As we know, uh, if they decide to uh, go and uh, get you, then uh, they, they, they do their best to, you know, investigate and uh, try, uh, try and shut down. But uh, all, the, all the best for uh, your new venture, and uh, thank you for uh, sharing uh, your experience. It could like we said, happened to any of us at uh, any time. So uh, it's certainly an issue which uh, needs uh, discussion and debate. Yeah, certainly, certainly does. It's it's not going to stop here. Uh, it's, it's a worrying sign for uh, our democracy that we're, we actively uh, have, have companies actively undermining it, but uh, it's, it's a brave new world. Thank you very much for your time, Tim. I really appreciate it. All right, everybody, that's the show for today. Our next event is almost upon us, which is the Free Speech Rally, hosted by the newly formed Australian Freedom of Speech Movement, which will be held in Melbourne outside the State Library of Victoria on Saturday, uh, 24th of February at 1pm. It aims to take a stand against the stifling of free speech in Australia, both in our laws and through political correctness. So I hope many of you can make it. Also this weekend is Dave Plow from Church and State is holding his first major event, the Church and State Summit 2018, on the 23rd to 24th of February in Brisbane, which will feature many high-profile speakers, including Margaret Court, former Deputy Prime Minister John Anderson, and Chairman of the Australian Christian Lobby, Jim Wallace. Thanks once again for your company, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.